Uh, we now recognize Mr. Wood for five minutes. Chairman Doyle and Pallone, Ranking Member Lada and Walden, and Subcommittee members, thank you for inviting me back. Free Press Action is a nonpartisan nonprofit with 1.4 million members around the country, and we support H.R. 1644, the Save the Internet Act. Our members know that having equitable access to technology and information is the key to making change and making a living. Net neutrality is an issue of economic and racial justice. It's a timeless non-discrimination law safeguarding people's rights to say and see what they want online, free from unjust interference by ISPs. This bill restores the FCC's 2015 Open Internet Order, released four years ago today, as luck would have it, and it and brings back the three bright line bans on blocking, throttling, and paid prioritization. But it does more than that, and that's a good thing. It restores the FCC's whole decision that adopted those rules, put them on the bedrock of Title II, and forbore from the parts of that law that we don't need. Restoring the 2015 framework is precisely the right approach on the law and the facts, and it's tremendously popular too. Huge majorities oppose its repeal, 86%, including 82% of Republicans, supported keeping the 2015 rules. So when I hear we can't have the 2015 rules back because we need a bipartisan solution, it reminds me of the Princess Bride line. You keep using that word, I do not think it means what you think it means. This bill restores the FCC's power to make new rules, preventing new forms of ISP discrimination. That's why Section 202 of the Communications Act is crucial. The FCC needs that authority to address any unreasonable discrimination, like AT&T schemes to favor its own video content and voice services, or Comcast's abuse of interconnection points to slow traffic to a crawl. Provisions like Section 201 are crucial too. It allows the FCC to address unjust and unreasonable behavior, like Verizon slowing down firefighters' data. Those who cynically say that wasn't a real net neutrality violation suggest that the FCC fiddle while forests and homes burn, rather than have the power to protect people's lives and public safety. They also say that Title II is somehow too new and untested, and yet also too old, while claiming, funnily enough, even older antitrust and FTC laws can protect the open internet. Their claims don't add up. The FCC has used the 2015 framework with great success for decades, for internet access, wireless voice, and business grade broadband too. When it returned to the right law for net neutrality in 2015, that decision was upheld in the courts twice. Some still say we have no business applying laws written for 1930s monopolies, but what about present day ones? By 2017, 39% of people in the US still had at most one choice for wireless broadband, offering downstream speeds of 25 megabits per second. At 300 megabits per second, that figure is, is 77%. But even if they have a couple of choices, I doubt many constituents back home complain to you that broadband is just so darn affordable and reasonable they'd be glad for no oversight at all. Yet while the Save the Net bill restores the FCC's ability and mandate to watch out for abuses and fraudulent billing, it also locks in the FCC's 2015 decision to forbear from rate setting under Section 205. It also puts the FCC back on solid ground to protect a whole host of broadband rights outside of net neutrality, with provisions like Section 254, offering a solid base for broadband universal service, and Section 224, granting competitive providers access to rights of way. And it fixes in place the 2015 order's decision not to apply resale or unbundling obligations in Section 251 that by their own terms do apply to telephone, telephone services alone. In sum, the bill restores not just the fundamental communications rights internet users need, but the certainty that broadband providers had. That's why they continued to invest and deploy at largely the same pace and on the same trajectories they did before the 2015 vote. New numbers for 2018 show that Chairman Pai's simplistic and silly promises on booming investment after repeal have not panned out. Broadband investments and speeds trend up over time, though spending does come in cycles, and it trends that way for rural carriers too. As my written testimony explains, one witness here last month claimed that he couldn't get a loan or expand his coverage for two years, all because of Title II's supposed shadow. Yet during the first two years of Title II's return, he invested $2 million in fiber and tripled the speeds offered to all of his cable broadband customers in rural parts of Oregon. Thankfully, the Save the Net Act cuts through the clutter of false claims about supposed investment impacts, and it restores all of the rights that internet users need. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.
Thank you, Mr. Wood.